160. Proof. 160. Proof. Yes. Today's the day. Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. We are always glad when you're with us. And today we're going over the talking, audible, proof and trail hydrometer. So stay tuned and let's get right at this. Well, welcome everybody, all you hobbyist brewers, distillers. And if you're just plain interested in what we have to offer. Again, uh, Barley and Hops, we're here to try to unlock the mysteries of home distilling. Uh, now, several once in a while, we get a chance to geek out. And we geeked out on our latest development uh, when we put together, and this took us it was a little over a month of some really hard work, but uh, we put together this audible proof and trail hydrometer, and you just heard that working. So you can listen and hear what your proof is, provided you have a parrot, uh, as opposed to trying to read that small scale. Uh, we developed this for our blind community, uh, but we think that there are some adaptations and some useful purposes for it in many of the rest of you in the community who either are vision impaired or just like me, plain dumbass lazy. Don't want to get up and look at it. That, that, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just kind of a neat thing to have. So before you get all geeky on me, understand, yes, there are a thousand ways to do this. This just happens to be the way George did it. So I understand. Um, yep, if you know anything about electronics, you know there's more than one way to wire that puppy. Uh, and I have found a more direct method that works for me. So please bear with me. If you find another way, help use it. Very good. Please, if you get an opportunity, of course, subscribe, share us with your friends. I've got to go over that. Because, yes, the only way that we are compensated is through YouTube. Uh, YouTube does compensate us for our videos because it gives them a platform for ads and ad revenue. So every time you subscribe, hit the bell and get notifications, like the video, and share us with your friends. Of course, our viewership goes up. Our ad revenue goes up. And, of course, it does compensate us. That's why we have never asked and never will ask you for any kind of donations. Uh, this is a totally free uh, service that we are going to continue to provide. Now, on to a public service announcement. Coming up here in the very near future, we're going to do another uh, live uh, uh, video presentation. Uh, we're going to do a YouTube live stream, yes. And uh, I posted a poll on the uh, community tab, and I asked three questions. Uh, do you think it would be better to take call-in questions, uh, give you an opportunity to send in emails and email questions, or maybe a combination, a mixture of both of those? And so far, your response has been 5% think that the call-in is a great idea. 7% uh, think that write-in is a good idea, but 78% of the respondents have said, hmm, maybe a mixture of both is a pretty good way of doing this. So guess what? Yep, we listen. We're going to do that. So um, I will give you some more information later on. I will publish times and dates. Uh, we'll try to be more accommodating for those viewers around the world, uh, if at all possible, and we'll let you know how and who to send and how to send in your questions so that we'll be able to get them and during the live stream, oh, by the way, I'll have you on the phone. So if it does go cattywampus, I have the option of hanging up. It's just the way it is. God, I love this. Okay, uh, the Proof of Trail Hydrometer. You've heard it in action, and I promised I wanted to share this with you. So that's what we're going to attempt to do today. And in sharing this with you, um, I'm just going to provide you with the basic information you need right now with a parts list. And then follow on videos, we will go through the process of actually plugging it, putting this thing together and plugging the wires in to make it work. Um, it's not that difficult. Warning, um, the programming portion can be a little bit tedious, okay? Uh, but we do have another option for you. And yes, I am going to package this all up in some sort of a unit that I can offer you uh, that is already pre-programmed, so all you have to do is plug it in, provide power, and boom, it'll work, okay? But that's going to be a couple 
weeks down the road before I can actually get to that point. Oh. Now, during this, I'm going to flash up a couple of uh, things on the screen just to kind of uh, give you a picture of what I'm talking about. And this will give you an, an, an opportunity to see up close what I'm talking about. And you can also look in the comments in the Oh, below the comments, below this video, you know, in that box uh, that describes the channel, you'll see there'll be links to all the parts and pieces you need, and uh, we'll, we'll do our very best to keep you informed. Okay, here's the way this thing works, okay? I'm powering it with a 9-volt battery. Uh, but you can also power it with a USB cable, um, and, you know, the USB plug on the other side that fits into your Arduino Uno, um, Either way works. Um, there's many different power sources. It takes up to like I think I think you can run 12 volts because it's got a, it's got it has a voltage regulator in this already mounted in the circuit board. So that's the power that goes in. And what that does is it activates the time of flight sensor that's located in the top of this tube. This time of flight sensor sends a beam down to the top of our proof and trail hydrometer, reflects that beam. And then it measures the distance or the time it took for that beam to travel down and back up. Converts that into a distance in millimeters. Now this time of flight sensor is a VL. I got this one from SparkFun. And you'll see this on the screen. Now, let me move out of the way so you can get a good look at that. That's, I got that from SparkFun. This is the uh, VL53L1X. Uh, now... SparkFun is not the only one that makes these. Uh, here's one that's made by uh, CQ Robot. They make a, a, the exact same model, but it's a different configuration, different way to hook it up. So uh, you have that option as well. Uh, these, you can solder in the wires and the pins, but SparkFun, if you get the Quickie, it's, it's called a Quickie. Uh, and the reason it's called a Quickie is because you got these wires that come with it, and you can just plug them in, and that way you don't have to solder. So it, it's like an extra two bucks. Uh, so totally up to you. Okay, so that time a flight sensor takes that information, sends it back to the Arduino. Uh, now this Arduino has been loaded with the program because it's a microprocessor. All it does is one thing. Exactly what George tells it to do. And after many, many, many weeks, we figured out how to tell it what to do. Uh, at, at least... Precisely, anyway. Uh, we always could tell it what to do. We just couldn't be precise about it. It took us a while. Uh, now, so we're telling it precisely what to do with that information. It tabulates that information, and then what it does is it determines the distance, and then we have an algorithm in there that converts that into from millimeters into a proof. Um, so we need to find, well, where do we get the proof from? Well, we have this micro SD card adapter, that takes a small micro SD card, boom, right there, that you load your own voice or someone else's voice. It doesn't matter whose voice it is, but you'll add, you'll, you'll you record numbers, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Uh, and you'll load that on here. Um, and then I'll show you on another video, I'll show you how to convert that into a WAV file that's necessary, the 1600 megahertz or 1600 hertz file. Uh, and then you leave that in here. So the Arduino says, hey, it's 161 proof. I want you to go get me 100, 60, and 1, and proof wave files. It does that. It says, spit them out. And it goes out on pin number 4. So the wire goes to my LM386 amplifier. Super direct, easy to wire up, positive, negative, and then an N. And the N comes from pin number four from your Arduino, which is the signal. Goes in there, it comes out these two wires, which are positive, negative. Goes into my speaker, and lo and behold, it says 161 proof. Now, it'll continue to say that as long as that doesn't change. It keeps getting the same information. As soon as that information changes, lo and behold, what the program does, program says, hey, oh, changed we're no longer this far, we're that far. All right, go to the SD card reader. Okay, I want you to get me 150 and 5 in proof. It does that. It says spit it out, 
spits it out through the LM386, 155 proof. And it will continue to do that. What I have found, where is it? Boom, right there it is. I have found that one 9-volt battery, this is an Energizer, I used a regular Rayovac. Uh, this, a Rayovac battery was able to operate this for seven hours straight. I was set out here in the shop and I heard myself for seven hours. Now, I didn't stay out here the whole time. I actually had to leave because it was driving me nuts. But it lasted seven hours on a battery. Uh, if you plugged it into your computer using a USB cable, of course, it's going to last indefinitely until you unplug that computer or you run out of battery power on the computer or whatever. You know, it, as soon as you run out of power, it's, it's going to quit, okay? Um, the one that we made for Mike down in Florida, who's really taking advantage of that thing right now, we put a small button on the top. Actually, what I did was I switched the hot wire on the speaker. I put a button, uh, a push button. So you push the button, it's on. You push the button, it's off. Push the button, it's on. Push the button, it's off. When I pushed the button and it was on, uh, it connected the speaker, and the speaker would spit out. And then once you heard it four or five times, you're like, okay, I haven't got that. You can push the button and shut it up, which uh, you know, keeps things quiet. It's still doing it. It's just not getting to the speaker, and then you just push the button, okay? Now, we've got, there are two main or primary parrots that I deal with, okay? Oh, before I get to that, let me show you this. I got my time of flight sensor mounted in the cap. So, and that mounts in the cap, and I've got a slit cut in the side for the wires to go through. So it goes right back on top. Let me remove that. And I want to show you this. So that is, oh, by the way, this is the entire, yes, it looks like a hot mess. But once you pretty it up, sex it up a little bit, put it in a box, solder it in the right place, it looks really cool. It, it, it works extremely well because that's all it does is one thing over and over and over again let me set that out of the way now when it comes to uh, parrots there are two major models on the market in my opinion okay now this is, does not take into consideration the one you build at home so that's why if I produce one of these uh, you will get everything all the way up to the time of flight sensor that's as far as I can go because I cannot see into your mind and know what you got that you made. Uh, and now this one is made by Mile High. It's a parrot. And this parrot has a large cup on this side that collects your spirit and acts as its own vent. Um, and then, of course, it comes up through the center and rolls over the top into the collection on the side and then runs out your spout. This one's made by Brew House. Uh, the difference between the two, they're, they're both somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 bucks. Um, you can make these yourself out of copper. Or you can, please don't make them out of PVC. Do not make them out of PVC, okay? Just leave it at that. Um, so, uh, yeah, this one's made uh, by Brew House, and the, the only difference is, is that you got a tube that goes on the end here that collects the spirit. You've got a small vent here. So it, it does the same thing. And then, of course, your spirits can run up through the center and across it overflows into the collection port and then goes right out of your exit port. Now, the interesting thing is, is that the distance between here and the distance between here just happens to be the same thing. So, our program works for both of these exactly the same way without any adjustment. If you have a different model and a different version for what you have, you're going to have to make your adjustments in the program uh, in order to fit your specific physical environment, okay? Now, oh, let me grab this here. This is, uh, this is my... Uh, I got a digital uh, caliper, and I want to tell you, show you the difference. Uh, the the major difference between the two, because one is height, um, this one is probably about a half inch shorter, but that has no effect on it whatsoever. Because remember, the distance is here, not totally here. It still accepts a hydrometer. So if I measure this outside diameter, that is two inches. So they use a two inch outside diameter stainless steel pipe, we get us a two inch inside diameter plastic PVC pipe. I know I said don't make this out of PVC, but this is only keeping out the environment and giving your time of flight sensor a place to sit. So this is perfectly okay. And that sets right over top. Now what we do need to do though is just a small shim shimming it up on the inside so it fits on nice and snug and it stops right there at the top. Okay, now 
So we know that this one's two inch. The difference being is that the one made from brew house is one and a half inches. So there's a half inch difference. Um, therefore, we use a one and a half inch pipe. Uh, it's relatively that simple. And what I also used was, um, this is a small piece of pipe from that you would use underneath the sink, a drain pipe. And I just slide that in there. And what that does is it gives me enough uh, shimming power uh, in order to fit over top of this nice and snug uh, all the way down, okay? So you do the same, you, we will do the same thing to this one as well, and we'll show you that when we get to that part. That's the step-by-step -step guide. Okay, now those are the two parrots, and those are their sizes. Now, next, uh, I'll show you what we did with the proof and trail hydrometer, because you'll notice we had to make an adaptation to it. Remember, we're firing a beam to the top of this thing, and instead of trying to fine-tune that to try to make that beam hit the top of that and reflect directly back up, uh, all we did was we had to increase that surface area so that no matter if, if it just moved a little bit, which you know that a hydrometer does, the proof and trail hydrometer, if, it, if your parrot moves, it moves. And so what we wanted was we wanted an accurate reading at all times. We want to know where it was. Well, we want to know where it is all the time because this thing is constantly taking measurements and it's taken hundreds of measurements and it's doing hundreds of averages to get exactly get as close to perfect as it can. So we always want to know where it is. We don't want to give it any false data. So in order to do that, what we needed to do was we needed to attach, I took an old uh, document protector, you know, with the real thin, you can use blue, you can use red, you can use green. I just used black because I just figured it was better. I, that's all. I have found no difference in the colors. Uh, just don't use white or don't, don't use clear, uh, kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, I guess you could use white. I don't see no reason why you couldn't because all we're doing is reflecting light. Um, I just haven't, try, I haven't tried it. Um, so I've got that, there it is. I cut a square, about a one and a half inch square. And what I will do is I will shape that down with a pair of scissors to fit the inside of my tube. Uh, with enough room so it can bounce around. Now, what I had happen in the past is, see, I lay this down, it doesn't go anywhere. It, it's still attached there. The initial ones that I made, though, when I did that, that thing popped right off. And I said, well, I wonder why that happened. Well, it happened was because, let me tell you what happened was. What happened was, is that the top of this thing is glass, and it was really, really smooth. So, no matter how much, and of course, the more super glue you use, the heavier it gets. Uh, it just wasn't making a really good seal to it. I was like, oh my gosh, we got to find another way to do that. So I tried several different methods and this one came up, this one turned out to be probably the most direct and easiest one for me to use. Um, I had this small etcher, this glass etcher, and what I did was I just scratched up the top of it and etched it, and then I did the same thing to the plastic hat that we put on it. And then I used a dot of super glue and placed that on top. And that's what I have here. And that worked extremely well. It's, a matter of fact, it worked perfect. Now, yes, there is a, a, a chemical called Armor Etch that you can get yes, for etching glass, you know, with, I got that laying around because I play with that sometimes. You, know, you can etch a glass, a mug, a jar uh, with a stencil. And so you put a dab on there and let that set for a couple of minutes and then wash it off. It'll do the same thing. I know that. Yes. Okay. Now, what does that do to the proof and trail hydrometer when you attach that with a dab of super glue? All right, that's, that's, that's your turn because I just asked the question. What does that do to the proof and trail hydrometer? <sighs> Some of you got it right. Yeah, it changes the weight. Keep that in mind, it changes the weight of this thing. So it no longer floats precisely as it did before you put the hat on. Now, it's not that drastic, uh, but it does make a difference. Now, let me tell you where the difference really is. The difference lies in the lower scale, because this is not a linear scale. So what I mean by that is, one millimeter here at the bottom, somewhere around the 10 the 20 proof area uh, is equivalent to probably 
oh, my, as much as nine proof uh, difference. One millimeter up here at the 190 proof area, one millimeter is about a proof off. The, uh, the difference of one, maybe two proof. Uh, so you see that the scale is sliding. It's not, it's not linear. It doesn't go direct. So uh, we had to develop a, an algorithm and a mathematical formula using log and some other stuff that Mark explained to me. Um, he did a great job. It, it takes into account all those differences and the wide scale that goes across the entire hydrometer. Um, so that when it does measure that distance, it can tell you exactly what the proof is, really. So when you drop this in, and let's say, for instance, it's 160 proof. Um, if you drop it in and it floats at 80% alcohol or 160 proof, more than likely, more than likely, your audible portion is going to say 159 proof. That's about a, it's about a one point difference. Your audible portion is the accurate reading. Your visual portion is, takes into account the additional weight that you placed on the top of it so it floats just a tad bit lower. Okay? And of course, as you go higher, that, that difference becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until it becomes almost imperceptible. But, <coughs> excuse me, but as you go as it starts to float higher, higher, and higher, which is less alcohol, less alcohol, less alcohol, then that difference becomes larger, larger, and larger because, again, the scale is not linear. My goodness. Ah, something tells me I've covered about everything that I could possibly cover on just introducing this thing. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the next several videos and we're going to take it step by step. So thanks for sticking with us. Without having this as a background, it is awful hard. It's going to be virtually impossible to follow along later because I'm not going to have the time to stop and explain every bit of that. Uno. This is the Uno R3. This is what we used. And I just happen to have a bunch of them. Uh, they run you, they're, oh, they're about 20 bucks. Um, you can use the Mega. It's a lot more powerful. can do a whole lot more. Uh, it's got a whole lot more memory, but why would you? But it would work. Uh, and then, we, of course, we have the Nano. And I bought a box of these, like 10 of them for, I don't know, 18 bucks, I think. Or they're, they're, really, they're really inexpensive. They work. All you got to do is load the program on the Nano as you would the Uno, but... See, now that gets into the technical aspects of it that I can explain in another video. Oh, it's a beautiful thing when it all comes together. And believe me, um, we, have, we have reserved no right to this. Um, this we offer to you, the community, to those who want to build one, and here in the near future, to those who want to pro procure one. What more could I offer you? Please, subscribe, share us with your friends. And you know the routine. Yep. Happy distilling.